Welcome back to the Film Noir series. In this video, we will cover Neisseria meningitidis, the cause of meningococcal meningitis, the second most common cause of acute bacterial meningitis. By the way, Streptococcus pneumoniae holds the number one spot. First, let's start with a quick recap. Neisseria are 1. Gram-negative diplococci 2. Oxidase positive 3. Glucose fermenters 4. Growth on chocolate agar 5. Also grow on VPN, aka Thayer Martin agar. 6. We see increased susceptibility in C5 through C9 complement deficiency because of lack of 7. MAC complex. 8. Major virulence factors are IgA protease. And 9. Pili that demonstrate antigenic variation. Okay, we now return to our feature presentation. MAC is in search of the lost flame. We join her in the study of General Mater. Pay close attention to everything you see because we've placed all kinds of clues for you. Ah, General Mater likes a single malt whiskey. This should help you recall a singular feature of Neisseria meningitidis, maltose fermentation. Remember, both N. meningitidis and N. gonorrhoeae ferment glucose, but only meningitidis ferments maltose. So what makes this bug so pathogenic? Well, for one, their pili allow them to attach to sticky surfaces like the mucus-covered nasopharynx, which they can colonize. Max pili-like earring is hanging close to her nose to remind you of nasopharyngeal colonization. Once there, meningococcus can enter the epithelial cells lining the nasopharynx and hang out without causing any problems, or they can spread to the bloodstream and wreak havoc. In the majority of cases, the bacteria stay tucked away inside the nasopharynx quietly, waiting to catch a ride on a sneeze to spread to the next host. This is called asymptomatic carriage. And meningitidis can outsmart the host's defenses with a protective capsule that prevents phagocytosis. But it can shed its capsule to enter the epithelial cell. With modern science, we've got some vaccines that target the capsular polysaccharides to neutralize this foreign invader. Of course, with one small but important exception, meningococcus type B. Turns out meningococcus type B has capsular antigens that don't appear foreign to our immune system, so it's not all that immunogenic. Until recently, we didn't have a vaccine for type B, so type B infections were a big problem. But the marvels of modern medicine came up with a way. Curious how? Stay tuned.